minutes ago, I'm going to bring a very special guest. This is definitely a dear brother of mine that's been in the radio industry, been a manager of a radio station, just um, doing some magnificent things in the tri-state area. And I want to welcome my dear brother, the Reverend Christopher Squire, the CEO of the Wilmington Chester Mass Choir to the Songbook of Gospel. Good morning, Reverend Squire. How you doing? What's up? I'm going to my hip-hop thing. How are you, sir? It's good to be... First of all, let me say thank you for for, uh, even considering putting us on the air. You've you've been a a friend to to, to the choir since I met you, and I just thank God for you. And I thank God for you, man, and the Wilmington Chester Mass Choir carrying us down the path of spirit-filled gospel music, man. You guys are an ultimate choir that always needs to be recognized for the outstanding contributions of spirit-filled gospel music, for sure. Well, praise God. We, 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 we try to make sure that the music that we, we meant, used to minister is related to the scriptures. We, I mean, it, it, it's, it's good music, but it has to be biblically based for us to do. Uh, that's one of the things that, you know, people, there are a lot of people singing a lot of stuff out there, and they're just trying to sell a record, but we're actually trying to minister to the hearts and the souls of people. So that's kind of like what we try to do. Absolutely, and I know that's to be true for many years because the last live recording, I was there and I felt the presence of the Lord, man. I was literally on my knees, uh, physically actually on my knees, just, you know, reverencing the presence of the Lord through the great spirit-filled sound. But before we talk about women to Chester Mass Squire, Reverend Squire, people need to know all over the world, who is Christopher Squire? <laughs> He's this crazy guy who just <laughs> loves Jesus with all of his heart. He's, uh, uh, I'm talking like I'm a third person. No. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just a real normal guy who's had his shares of ups and downs, and God decided to deliver, and I decided to listen to the voice of God and accept what he wanted me to do. I started in ministry uh, back in 1982 and was, and was uh, ordained in 1988, so I've been in ministry for a long time. But, but when I tell people the truth about, about my life. You, know, you could be in ministry for a long time, but you might, be, might not be really connected with God the way you're supposed to be. Wow. So I did a lot of crazy, dumb stuff, even as a minister. And then God started to show me some things about uh, who I am in Him and not who I am in me. And I found out that what God wanted me to be was much greater than what I ever thought I could be. So that's when my life began to change about 11, 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just wanted to begin to minister and teach people how to live, not just trying to emotionalize them, but how to live and how to change their life. Because if God can change my life, he can change anybody's life. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Now, are you a native of Philadelphia? Well, I'm originally from Chicago. I moved into uh, the area for a job in radio in 1989. Mm-hmm. And I've been here now for it's 21 years. Wow. I love the East Coast. God, it, it, is, it is the best area to live in. Great. That's wonderful, Chris. I wanted our listeners to know a little bit about who you are, man, because you have carried, um, you know, the woman to Chester Mass Choir under the late Reverend Ernest Davis uh, Jr. Now, could you share with our listening audience a little bit about that transition? You know, I remember meeting him years ago and then God allowed you to come on board. Can you share a little bit about the transition that took place then? And then we're going to talk about that brings us up to where we are now. One of the the most incredible things I, I, I understood years later that that my purpose for coming to the East Coast was not necessarily to do radio, but to help the the ministry of Wilmington Chester go forth. Because I met uh, met Ernie six weeks after I moved, Reverend David, six weeks after I moved to the area. And in that six weeks, I, I kid you not, it had to be three months in that he became a part of the radio station I was at. I hired him there. Then I began, I started to do, Great. Now, how long has this choir been around, man? Because people need to know that. The choir, the choir was formed 32 years ago, February oh. the 
22nd, I think the date is, 1978. My goodness. And, and, and I tell people, I say, wow, you know, it was formed in 78. I joined in 89, 90, 89 was the the unofficial date, 90 was the official date, and I've been part of the choir for over uh, two-thirds of, of its existence, which is amazing. Wonderful, and congratulations to you, because through all the ups and downs, the choir has still remained under your vision and leadership, and to God be the glory, man. Well, one of the things that we, we did, we, we originally looked at, at Reverend Davis's vision, and there were some things I, I'll never forget. We went to uh, the Stella Award in 1989, 1998, and Mrs. Mask. It was at the Apollo Theater. Never, ever, ever forget it. Mm-hmm. And me, uh, Reverend Davis, and uh, Evangelist Roberta Crew, we drove up to New York. Uh, that, that I think it was a Friday night, and we they had the Stella Awards, and it was the Stella Awards that Mississippi Mass Choir came down the aisle scene. Wow! And he he said to me on that day, you know, we got to get here. We got to. Uh, we've got to uh, uh, get on. We have to win an award. That's what he said, and we have to. Uh, sing on this this thing, and those were two things I kept in mind through the whole process, and we were able to fulfill those things within two or three years after he passed. So wow. it was that, and then his other vision, the, the overall vision for the ministry, was to carry the word of God and to be a choir that was not like the other choirs, and nothing wrong with the other choirs. That that uh, their whole gist was putting together a great performance. Uh-huh. He wanted the music to be the the, 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 the performance. Wonderful. And not the, the individuals in the organization. Great. So so you guys have been doing a whole lot, um, you know, from the last recording, I remember that. But you guys also have been doing concerts and singing different places. And last year, I believe, you know, because I was at the live recording, you know, God gave you the vision to go ahead and record again. Is that correct? Yes. It, 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 this, was, this, this recording was the most difficult out of every recording because the year prior, uh, my mom had passed away, and my mom and I were very, very close. Mm. And I thought nothing could could uh, could could even come close to the feeling that I felt. And three weeks prior to the recording, my daughter, my oldest daughter, passed wow. away from lupus. And I was at, at that recording. I was totally. I mean, it, it was all God that was taking me through that because my heart was just so overflowing with with with, with pain and and, and hurt. Because I had lost my daughter, so it was a, a tough recording. But the choir ministered that night. Oh yes, changed the whole course of what um, what I what I wanted to do, and I, I felt very very good about that. Yes, the good things about the ministry of the choir that, that I really really appreciated. They, what they did was they were able to take me from a place uh, of, of hurt and pain and brought me back to where God wants me to be in ministry. Absolutely. And I, I have to say, it was definitely a spirit-filled moment, and I mean, the church was packed. And tell people where that live recording was. That was at my church, Antioch, Antioch Baptist Church in Camden, uh, New Jersey, on Ferry Avenue. That's the church that I attend. Pastor John Parker is my pastor. And I, I just love that ministry. It's an incredible ministry. And they allowed us to, to operate. And it, it was, it was a, a blessing for me because it was the very first time that my church has seen me operate to that level in the wow. ministry with the choir. Now, they've seen me on the TV shows. They've seen me in other places at concerts, but they had never seen me operate from start to finish, putting together a recording situation like this. That was really, really cool. Oh, yeah, and we were glad to be there. Now, now tell the listeners, because this is an exclusive interview with Simone Malone, and that they're going to get a chance to hear two of the songs from the CD that will be coming out and, and tell tell them tell them Chris now that the CD is not available this is an exclusive situation right not, not only is the <laughs> CD not available yet but the single which is to be released to radio in about nine ten days is not released but because uh, when we released the last project uh, uh, Simone was so incredible in helping us and promoting us, and he's here in the neighborhood he's here in town with us and I just felt that it was very important that, that we show some love to some people. Now, there are a couple other people that will get the same love <laughs> tomorrow and the, and the end of the week. But I just thought it was so important that, that we, we did that and showed Simone and, and all of the listeners how important that he is to us. So nobody has the single. Wow. Nobody. I mean, one person in California. I mean, not California. Um, Canada. Mm. But other than you, this is going to be the first time it's ever heard in the United States of America. <laughs> well, they, they don't need to hate on us. They need to love us because we give it to you fresh and first <laughs> you for know, sure. What they really need to do is 
because they need to tune into you because when you have friends that will give up like that for you, <laughs> they know that all the new stuff will come to you first. I love you for that, man. I really, really do. And I thank you so much for respecting us and for what we do. You're definitely one of my true colleagues in broadcast.